Hey everybody, it's John Sanson, and today we're gonna to be talking about how you can get the very best from your model test shoots. I am super excited about this topic today. I get so many questions from you guys about how you can get the very best from your model test shoots, how you can get in contact with agencies, how do you go about casting, how do you choose your models for the shoots and the projects that you're working on, how do you get the best out of them in terms of posing. We're gonna talk about some of this stuff today and if you've got any questions or wanna share your own experiences, absolutely leave them down in the comments below. We'll start a conversation and maybe we can even get to some of them in a future video. Let's get into it. Tip number one, be professional. Treat your test shoot as if it was a client commission. Do everything exactly as the same you would, right down to all the final planning and the details. In the communications back and forth with the agency, on email, even speaking on the phone, keep it professional. This is an opportunity to show people how you operate. Even though you're collaborating with people, you may be meeting new artists and creatives for the very first time, these makeup artists and stylists and even models that you're working with could potentially put you in contact with future clients. This is an opportunity for you to put your best foot forward, so you absolutely have to capitalize on it. Be professional at all times. Some additional things that you might want to think about are making sure that you have a call sheet, getting everyone's contact details together. Why not take the initiative and actually put everyone's social media details on the call sheet and send it around to the team ahead of time, thereby making it easier for everyone else in your team to connect with each other too. The more positivity you inject into this experience overall, the more likely the creatives and the people that you work with are going to want to work with you again. So absolutely, be professional at all times. Tip number two, use a professional makeup artist. Just because you're doing a test shoot doesn't mean that you should throw all the typical planning out of the window. You want to ensure that the ingredients that you're putting into your image making are of the highest quality possible in order to maximize the opportunities that you can potentially get out of investing your time in this test shoot. A makeup artist is an invaluable asset on any shoot that you do. And you know, I'm sure if you actually reach out on social media, if you actually leverage your network, I'm sure you'll be able to find makeup artists who are keen to actually test with you on a free basis as well. If you're providing them with quality images that they can use for their portfolio, then they're absolutely going to want to get involved with you and produce exceptional work. One of the other things that you want to think about too is that the quality of the images that result from your test shoot, the amount of retouching that will be required after the fact will significantly be reduced if you are using a professional and experienced makeup artist. Tip number three, manage the expectations of the agency. Now, in order for you to continue doing test shoots, you need to make sure that you're delivering value back to the agency who sent you their model. So one of the very first things that you should do is have a conversation with the agency about what they expect you to deliver. Is it five images? Is it 10 images? Do they need more portfolio type imagery for their model? Maybe they're looking to actually have something with a bit more of an editorial look to it. You have to have this conversation ahead of time. Some agencies will actually have a testing mood board that they can provide you with, which is a valuable tool in getting an idea on what sort of visual direction that they will expect from you. Conversely, you can actually send your mood board to the agency and say, look, this is what I'm thinking about shooting. This is the direction that I'm thinking of going with the makeup. How do you feel about this? Is it on brief? Is it relevant for the girl or guy? Another thing that you'll want to discuss with the agency before your test shoot is qualifying when they expect to have the images back from you. Typical industry standard is 10 to 14 days. However, some may expect the turnaround time to be quicker and this could have implications for things such as how much effort you're gonna be able to put into the retouching. So have this conversation beforehand, manage those expectations. Tip number four, create a productive environment. In order for you to get the best from your team and your model, you want to ensure that you create the most positive atmosphere that you can on set. So when your team arrives, actually take the time to get to know these people. Sit down, shoot the breeze for a while, learn a little bit about who the people are that you're actually working with. I guarantee you that the more of a personal connection you are able to make with the people that you're working with, 
the higher quality your images will be as a result. Guaranteed, it's one of the most overlooked things. People do not develop a personal relationship with their subjects before they photograph them. It's huge. Photography is all about emotion. It's all about connection. As photographers, we all love the gear and the technology, the f-stops, but it's actually a major distraction. If you can increase the quality of the emotional content, the messaging of your image making, it will set you apart from 90% of the work that is out there. So invest the time in getting to know your team and getting the best from them. Some of the other things that you might want to think about on set in order to set the right mood is what music could you have in the background? Typically, you can ask the model what playlist they like. Have something ready to go ahead of time. Everyone's using Spotify and things like that. So build playlists that are appropriate for the shoot. You can take it a step further and you know think about the type of mood that you actually want to create on set. Is it soft and sensual? Or maybe you're going for something a little bit more dramatic. The type of music that you play can influence this and it's a great contributor to getting the right mood and the right results out of your team. Now, when you're testing with new models, they're going to be looking to you as the photographer for direction, particularly when it comes to things like posing. My advice to you is actually to put together a mood board ahead of time to give inspiration for some of the posing that you might want your model to adopt. This isn't something that necessarily needs to be interpreted interpreted literally, it, it's more about a source of developing and creating ideas, conveying a mood, you know, soft and sensual posing, very dramatic, maybe you're looking for lots of angles and interesting shapes. It's all about inspiration and, and once you've got your mood board, I like to send them around to the team before the test shoot, but what you can do is actually pin them up on set as well maybe on a phone call board that's just out of view of the camera, but somewhere where the model can see and she can glance across and get inspiration. And it really helps to keep the flow going on set. If you're someone who likes to freestyle things a little bit more, or if you like to create quite natural and flowing movements, a great tip that I can give you is rather than proposing specific poses for people to use, instead give your model a backstory, give them a character to become, build facets of their personality. You know, maybe it's a girl who's wandering the city, maybe she's on vacation, maybe she's exploring somewhere, or you know, maybe she's running for a train, or there's so many different possibilities. Think of movies that inspire you, all the different backstories that you can potentially give. And it's really fun because you'll often find that you'll uncover characters and sides of people that you weren't expecting. And it's a wonderful surprise to be able to get these different types of images, if you like, that you hadn't planned for. Remember that photography is an explorative process. It is, shouldn't be something that's formulaic. It becomes too tight and constrictive. You, you need to allow the freedom for the creativity to actually naturally flow. So it's a, a tip that I would encourage some of you to take into consideration. Tip number five, fashion styling. Now, if you're doing a fashion test shoot, then you absolutely need to put some thought into the fashion styling that you're going to use. My advice to you would be do what you can to actually involve a stylist in your collaborations. The more people that you have in the team, the more coordination is required in order to get everyone committed to be working together at the same time. And the trouble with test shoots is that you know things can be quite fluid because often your model will need to pull out at the last minute if a paid opportunity does come up. So you need to be quite flexible, but it's always going to increase the production value of your project if you can actually have a fashion stylist involved. Now that said, if that's not something that's available to you, then absolutely you can style the shoots yourself. You know, go out and actually get some essential wardrobe. Keep it simple though. Go online and have a look at some of the major model agencies in your area and look at the portfolios. Have a look at the type of images that those girls and guys have in their books and it will give you an idea. The styling will often be very dialed down because the whole point of a test shoot and a model's book is to showcase the model, not the fashion. So whilst you want the images to be well styled and ideally timeless, uh, if not on trend, what you should do is actually put some direction with regards to styling down on your call sheet. So give some instruction to the agency and to the girl or guy as to what they should potentially bring with them on the day of your shoot. Keep it simple. I'll have a look and see if I've got anything that I can actually share with you and I'll put it down in the description box below. But again, it's really down to personal taste. My visual aesthetic is not going to necessarily be the same as yours. So, you know, just go out, have a look, get some essentials uh, that you can use on an ongoing basis for your test shoot. Tip number six, 
coach your models. The whole point of testing is for everyone to improve the quality of their work. It's not just about the images. Obviously that's the product. However, there's so much more to image making than just that final output. For example, as a photographer, you've obviously got a lot of experience in visual aesthetics, right? Posing direction. So if you're working with a brand new model, think about how you can help them progress in their own development. Maybe you should invest some time working on posing the hands with them, or maybe you wanna do some floor work, seated posing, maybe portraiture how they can work on their posture. I mean, posing is a huge topic, but as part of the value proposition, as part of the relationship that you're building with the agencies that you're testing with, you want to be actually providing feedback to everyone in your team. So time permitting, what I actually like to do at the end of a shoot is sit down and go through the images that we've created together. We'll just grab them and sit down at the laptop and just quickly blitz through everything that we've got. It's a perfect opportunity to see the journey that you made to the shot. Quite often you'll find that you know, especially in digital, 15 shots are throwaway because they're iterations to get to that desired output. And it's really helpful if you can communicate your journey, if you like, to that image so that the model can understand, oh yeah, I see these were the minor adjustments that you were making. That's why you were giving me my, this direction because it looks more flattering from this perspective. And you know, it's a really good way for the team to actually uh, build a shared understanding with one another. And that's just looking at posing. You should always be reviewing your images as a team, especially with the makeup artist, seeing where things always look different on the computer. When you sit down, you see that larger image, it's really hard to see what's going on on the back of the camera. And once you've got all your lights set up, especially in the studio and things like that, you know, your makeup artist might want to make adjustments. So. These are things that you'll want to take into consideration, especially if you're working on beauty projects on the side and things like that too. Tip number seven, have fun with it. Fashion photography in particular is one of the most sought after professions in the world. It is an absolute privilege to be able to do what we do, so have fun with it. All right, I'll carry you in your seat, all right? Yeah. Two, three, two, one, go. <laughs> that was pretty. As the photographer, you are the conductor of the orchestra. Get everyone playing together in harmony and you'll get some fantastic images together. I guarantee it. So there you have it. There's just a few tips as to how you can get the very best from your model test shoots. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching. I totally lost my train of thought.